Hi, my name is Espen Lingor, and I'll present ongoing work on an adaptive floating node based formulation for progressive fatigue analysis of multiple delamination. Before I start, let me introduce my co workers, Gulem Trobel, Brian Bach, Lau Carreras, and Boeing Cheng, and emphasize that most of the hard work behind this presentation has been done by our PhD student, Gulem. So the challenge that we want to solve is to efficiently perform high cycle fatigue simulation of delamination in laminate composite structures like wind turbine blades and airplanes. Delamination simulation today is typically conducted by cohesive zone modeling within the framework of the finer element method, making it convenient for solving complicated delamination problems. But the Achilles heel of cohesive zone modeling is that it's computationally expensive since it requires fine interface discretization at every potential crack path of the composite structure, which limits its use in larger scale problems. In this work, we propose a solution to this problem, which basically consists of three main ingredients, an adaptive floating node method element, which automatically may refine and coarsen itself and insert cohesive sub-elements at needed interfaces, an adaptive refinement scheme that monitor current interface state, and decide the refinement level for the adaptive floating node element, and thirdly, a cohesive zone fatigue delamination method for high cycle fatigue simulation. With the proposed adaptive framework, we may solve complicated problems like this, involving multiple delamination, where the adaptive method during the analysis automatically refine and causing the mesh, making it computationally efficient. So this will be the topic of my talk. First, I will cover the adaptive fine, uh, refinement formulation, including the adaptive floating node element. I will briefly explain the cohesive fatigue method we use in this work, and then I'll present some numerical examples and results, and finally, I will conclude. But let us start with the adaptive formulation. The formulation is based on observations done on typical cohesive traction and damage profile, here shown for a mode one interface example. From these observations, we may define four zones together with the associated mesh requirement. We have the full damage zone that has a fully damaged interface and only needs coarse cohesive elements to model separation and simple contact. We have the high gradient traction zone that includes the damage process zone and a small part of the traction field ahead of the damage process zone. And this zone requires fine cohesive elements to accurately model progressive damage. And then we have the core zone, which is defined as the small traction zone ahead of the damage process zone, which may be modeled by coarse cohesive elements to capture the elastic energy in the cohesive zone. And finally, we have the inactive zone, which is far away from the damage process zone and do not need to be modeled by cohesive elements. Based on the observations, we propose an adaptive refinement scheme which works on the discretized initial coarse adaptive floating node element mesh as shown here. In principle, the fine element bookkeeping consists of just two parts, and first we identify an interface state for each interface in each adaptive floating node element, as shown in this example here, having three interfaces. And then we identify the crack tip adaptive floating node element and its immediate neighbors ahead of the crack tip. And the crack tip is here defined as the onset of cohesive damage. Then we define four interface states, where the first is the full damage state, which is modeled by coarse cohesive elements as shown here, together with the resulting mesh refinement. Then we have the refined state, which is modeled by fine active cohesive elements. And then we have the core state, which is modeled by coarse cohesive element, and its zone size is defined by a user input length ahead of the refined zone. All other interfaces are uh, in the adaptive floating node element uh, are kept at an idle state and no refinement or cohesive elements are added. The interface, ref the interface refinement states in all adaptive floating node elements are updated at every equilibrium iteration of the nonlinear solution procedure. Let us now study how the adaptive refinement scheme automatically updates during a nonlinear solution. I will start the animation and explain what is shown. We consider a quasi-static DCB mode 1 case with an initial coarse mesh with a single adaptive floating node element in the thickness direction. The model has three interfaces, but only the interface in the middle is delamination. 
Here is shown the structural response curve compared to the analytical solution, and over here we see the traction and the damage profile of the middle interface according to the position within the DCB specimen. Here is shown the current adaptive floating node element interface states for all three interfaces, and finally down here is shown the resulting mesh refinement as the crack propagates. As can be seen, the adaptive formulation produced the correct solution when compared to the analytical solution and also does so with a relatively coarse mesh. The adaptive floating node element developed in this work is an extension of the floating node method by Cheng and co-workers, which was introduced as an alternative to the phantom node method and the XFEM to model element discontinuities. The main features of the method that make it interesting for our formulation is that it conserves global connectivity, meaning that all degrees of freedom are initialized but only included in the equation system when they are active. It also has the ability to model uh, multiple cracking, allowing for multiple delamination, and it has a simpler formulation for cohesive cracks than XFEM and the phantom node method. And it may also be used to model soft discontinuities. The adaptive floating node element we propose consists contains a set of internal floating nodes and shared uh, flow edge floating nodes, which initially do not have a position assigned, so they are floating. To establish the stiffness matrix of the adaptive floating node element, we first need to divide the element in sub-elements, which is driven by the interface states provided by the adaptive refinement scheme, which we just discussed. If any interface in the element needs refinement, uh, the element is, is first refined by vertical uh, divisions, and if an interface has a refined state, a horizontal division is then added to that interface. Next, we activate the necessary floating nodes and assign them a position and initial displacements. First, we activate the shared edge floating nodes, which are interpolated between master nodes, and then we activate the internal floating nodes by interpolating between edge nodes and the remaining floating nodes are then kept inactive. If another interface gets active and needs refinement, then the entire process is repeated. Then we calculate the sub-element stiffness matrices, which is done by standard fine element formulation. The cohesive element used here is a four-noded element with a mixed mode damage formulation, and the solid element is a layered four-noded element using an EAS formulation to avoid shear locking. And finally, we may assemble the adaptive floating node element stiffness matrix. We also need to address the transition between elements that have active and inactive interfaces as shown here at the bottom right. So to avoid incompatibilities at this transition, the edge floating nodes of the element with the active interface is enforced to follow the non-refined element edge by using multipoint constraint equations. Let me now briefly outline the delamination fatigue method we use in this work. In this work, we use the high cycle fatigue model, which we introduced in 2016 and recently extended to 3D delamination cases. It is an envelope load approach, and at every cycle jump, the damage state is updated by integrating the damage rate over the elapsed number of cycles. Schematically, the key concept of the simulation method for fatigue delamination is as follows. So we start from an unloaded state and we will now monitor the cohesive state of this point mark with a cross in the DCB specimen. And the cohesive state is shown over here. So first we load crash statically to a subcritical loading state and the interface become partly damaged as the mark point as we can see. Then we continue with a fatigue step in which fatigue cycles are jump and during the fatigue step the traction and separations follow the crash static cohesive law. When the total specific work of the most damaged point equals the energy release rate, complete damage is enforced to that point and the damage variable is set to 1. And we compute the energy release rate by means of the J integral. At further fatigue cycles, the considered point in the cohesive zone is fully damaged and the cohesive traction remains zero. The method is based on a damage rate formulation that links the damage rate locally, point-wise locally in the cohesive zone to the global crack growth rate. And let me shortly explain how we evaluate the terms in this relation. 
So the derivative of damage with respect to mode mixity and separation are properties that can be derived from the quasi-static cohesive law, and the derivative of the mode mixity and separation with respect to crack extension are determined by using the growth driving direction criterion from this paper here. And since we allow for multiple delamination, we establish a local coordinate system at each crack tip for calculation of these derivatives. The crack growth rate is based on the experimentally determined Paris law, where the current energy release rate is determined by means of the mode decomposed cohesive J integral. And in the case of multiple delamination, a bookkeeping is established to identify the crack tips and also identify and define the J integral contours for each crack. So let us now consider some numerical examples. The first examples are validation cases by considering fatigue simulation of moment-loaded DCB specimen. This particular specimen is attractive for two reasons. First of all, we may easily achieve any mode mixity between pure mode 1 and mode 2 by adjusting the ratio between the applied bending moments. Secondly, the specimen is a steady state specimen, meaning that the energy release rate and the mode mixity is constant with crack extension. And for the validation, we have considered three levels of mode mixity as shown here. And first we compared the crack growth rate obtained by simulation to the theoretical Paris law for these mode mixities as shown here, and also for different levels of loading measured in terms of the energy release rate. As we can see on the graph here, the simulated crack growth rates by the adaptive simulation is in perfect agreement with the theoretical Paris law. To verify the steady state uh, and the self-similar fatigue crack growth behavior of the specimen, we now consider the computed J integral for every solution step of the simulation. And from the crack or from the from the graph down here, we verify that the J integral is constant throughout the fatigue simulation as it should. Having validated the method for single delamination, let us now consider this double delamination case. It has two initial pre-cracks and loaded by the prescribed displacements. First, we apply a quasi-static loading step and secondly, a fatigue loading step. And in the results, we will monitor the cohesive tractions in mode one and mode two and damage for each interface where black markers here indicate crack one and yellow markers indicate crack two. From the traction results, we observe that both cracks propagate under mixed mode conditions, with crack tip 1 being in a higher mixed mode state than crack tip 2. We may also see that crack tip 2 propagates uh, faster than crack tip 1, which is due to a higher energy release rate for this crack. In the bottom left animation, we see the crack length to the number of cycles for both crack tips and this is compared to the theoretical crack length predicted by the Paris law. And again, the prediction by the adaptive formulation and the fatigue formulation is very good, also in the case of multiple delaminations. And this brings me to the conclusions. So to conclude this presentation, I will introduce this more advanced double delamination case, which we currently are investigating. It involves three pre-cracks and the load sequence involves two quasi-static load steps and two fatigue load steps. And this simulation case is a much more complicated multiple delamination case than the previous examples just discussed, since it has unstable crack growth during the first fatigue cycles at this stage here, and also that the three crack tips here are highly interacting. So all of this makes it very difficult to validate this example by only considering theoretical Paris law data from single delamination cases. So as we see it, in order to further develop and validate multiple delamination fatigue method, there is a strong need for new experimental benchmarks. So if any of you know about experimental multiple delamination fatigue cases to benchmark against, or you plan to conduct, so, conduct so, such studies in the future, we would be happy to discuss it further. As a final remark, I would like to draw your attention to two other presentations from our research group Cracks. They are stated up here. And these presentations are also related to fatigue, but examines the influence of more complicated loading spectra of, on damage development in composites. Thanks for watching.